still amongst the living and during these times, amen, we are to be excited and giving God praise, amen? Amen, amen. amen. hallelujah. With this virus going around the country, amen, we've lost a few generals across the country, near and far, amen, and we want to pray their strength and their families. We ask you for their prayers, amen, for Dr. Alan Alok, amen. We ask for prayers for Dr. Mayweather family, Amen. We ask for prayer for my own family, for Bishop Heflin and Lady Heflin. Amen. Bishop Heflin is the one that passed. Amen. But Lady Heflin is still here. Amen. And if any of you, amen, have lost loved ones, amen, during this time, we are asking God for prayers for you and strength and peace during this time. Amen. 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 While you're standing, come on and let's honor our apostle on today. Mercer Jr., amen, Pastor Dickerson, amen, hallelujah, Elder Garrison, amen, Elder Mills, Pastor Russian, amen, to all of our deacons, amen, the chair, the vice chair, amen, the deaconess, all of our mothers, the security team, the choir, the praise team, Lord and glory and everybody. Those of you that are tuned in and those of you that are actually here in the sanctuary, amen. We don't want to forget you, amen, because God has not forgotten about any of us, amen. 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 Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, for this is a day that you have made, but a day that we have yet to see fully. Now, God, we ask, God, that you will see your anointing power in St. Matthew this morning. Have your divine way like no before Jesus. Come heal, deliver, and set free in a mighty way only as you can. And God, we will forever give your name all of the praise and all of the glory, God. We bless you right now. We promise you we will not wait till the battle is over, but we will praise you right now. We will tell you thank you right now. We will shout right now. We will glorify your holy name, Jesus. And God, we just thank you right now for covering us in your blood like never before, God. For we know that the blood of Jesus still works, God. We thank you right now that no way, that no way, no way, no way, no way that's going to this, this ministry, that's going to this, you shall prosper. And we thank you right now, God, that every tongue that comes against us in judgment, thou shalt condemn. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your joy. We thank you right now, God, that no one will have a nervous breakdown, God. We thank you right now, hallelujah, Jesus, that we're still standing because of you. God, we ask God that you will bless and cover our apostle as he went forth the word of today, Lord. God, we ask God that you will cover this praise team as they come forth and you will bless God. We thank you right now for crucifying flesh in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for unity, God. We thank you, God, that those that are watching, God, that they can feel you, Jesus. We ready in Jesus in this place, God, and we ask God that you will never take your presence away from us, God. We thank you for your anointing power like never before. Holy Ghost, rest, go, and abide in this place. Rest, rule, and abide in our temples. Rest, rule, and abide, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And we just ask God that you dispatch your ministry to the angels of heaven, God, to shield, protect God like never before. And we believe that it is so. And so it is in Jesus. So Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Begin to speak increase in their life. The Lord. As the praise team was going forth, I heard the Lord say, I'm about to bleed all over. I'm about to bleed all over. Whatever you're in need of, whatever deal you're trying to bring forth, whatever healing you need in your body, I'm about to bleed all over. I'm about to bleed all over. I'm about to bleed all over. 
you just gently squeeze them neighbors to let them know God is about to bleed over this situation. God is about to bleed over this situation. We thank you, God. We praise you right now. I begin to praise. I begin to thank God for the person that you're squeezing right now. Because if God is about to do it for them, then he is certainly about to do it for you. Because you're not selfish right now, and you believe in God to do it for the person that's next to you. God is about to do it for you. He's about to do it for you. He's about to do it for you. Come on, 10 more seconds. Nine, eight. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We praise you right now, God, for healing, God, deliverance, God, financial breakthrough right now, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We praise you all over this place. And we thank you for your word that's about to come forth. Touch the saints in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now look at them real quickly. Look at them real quickly and say, I just prayed for you. No, I'm about to pray for you. So on the count of three, I need you to stop for who you just prayed. On the count of three, you need to those of you that are watching us all over, yourself may heal somebody's body right now. But look at them and say, I'm about to pray for you. On the count of three, I want you to shout for them. Ready? Ready? One, two, three, go! praise team was going forth, I was making sure that my notes were together or my scriptures were together on my phone. And a deal that I had enough faith, check this out, to uh -huh. walk away from yesterday. Amen. Sometimes you have to have enough faith to walk away from it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as I was walking away from it, the realtor texted me and said, we're willing to negotiate because the deal, we cannot let it die. Mm -hmm. And so when you get ready to do things on God's terms, everything will bow down and allow you to orchestrate in the manner that God told you to. Uh -huh. uh, the point that I'm trying to make in this quasi-introduction to my sermonic expression is All this. Right. Uh, stop giving up on the things that God has told you to do. Yeah. I don't know what it is that God has told you to do in this season, but the enemy wants to wear you down and yeah. make you quit before the time. Uh -huh. yes. I want to release this to about 300 of you that are watching us from all over the globe. The only way you won't get your blessing is if you quit. Uh -huh. yeah. Look across the room and tell somebody, I'm not a quitter. Uh -huh. I'm a whole to until he blesses me. I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. Listen, those of you who have your Bibles or whatever apparatuses in which that you study and read the Word of God all of, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to a very uh, popular apostolic uh, epilogue or missive, uh, Ephesians chapter 6. All right. All Ephesians All right. chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Really will be. Can all y'all hear me out there fairly well? Amen. Sister so, Jones, can you hear me? Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Mm -hmm. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, All right. but against principalities, mm -hmm. against powers, Hallelujah. and against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness mm -hmm. in high places. Mm -hmm. so, so true. I'd like to talk to you today from the subject, Your Apostolic Assignment. Right. Your apostolic assignment. In fact, as you get ready to take your seat, to those of you that are watching all over the world, lay hands on yourself and say, I have an apostolic assignment. Apostolic assignment. Please be seated. 
Please be seated. As I study the Bible, Dr. Derek Mercer, one of my uh, favorite authors of message throughout the text is the Apostle Paul. Uh, the Apostle Paul is a brilliant individual, simply because he never finds a reason to quit. Uh, he goes through so many different things on his excursions, preaching the gospel all over the globe, facing death, persecution, lack, and all of these different things, but he never stops conveying the gospel, okay. Pastor Andrews. Uh -huh. I find it quite interesting because in today's society, if uh, uh, our preachers do not have the environment conducive to their gifts, uh, they could not go forth in the manner that they should. But here it is, Paul is shipwrecked and still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here it is, Paul is facing being stoned throughout different missions, and he's still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to speak to you prophetically because I apostolically understand the tone of the society in which we're dealing with today. You are going to have to preach in some uncomfortable yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, you may not be ready for it, but you're going to have to preach in some uncomfortable places yes, sir. and check this out against some uncomfortable opinions. Uh -huh. uh, there's going to be people right now who do not agree with the way you're conveying the word of Say God. So. Uh, because what we have done is taken the gospel, which has been here since man was ever created, and we have taken it and tailored it to our liking. Because we tailored it to our liking, there are people out there that only want to hear a gospel that fits their own uh -huh. children. Uh -huh. yeah. And so like Paul, we have to be willing to preach an unpopular message during unpopular times. Yes, sir. Uh, it's not about being vested. It's not about the ring you wear. It's not about the degrees you have. It's not about the church you pastor. It's about the God that you serve. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul is going through all types of things, and one of the things that is remarkably interesting, Evangelist Bannister, is that Paul gives his testimony to King Agrippa and winds up in Rome. Uh -huh. Paul is not just Jewish by, by, by birth, he is Roman in citizenship. Uh -huh. So when they get ready to arrest him for casting out a spirit uh, of divination, isn't it sad that people will want to arrest you for doing the will of God? Uh -huh. so Paul gets arrested and he appeals to Caesar. Upon appealing to Caesar, they put him on a ship and he sails to Rome. Uh, well, while in Rome, he offends the Roman hierarchy in such a capacity that he's placed in jail. Uh, but before he's placed in jail, he's locked, check this out, between two guards that walk between him daily. Uh, they got him on both sides. They're to his left and then to his right. And as Paul is walking back and forth in chains, saints of God, facing uncertain death, Paul has the temerity to minister to the two men that's got him locked in chains. Uh, uh, let me take a minute and see if I can make this hermeneutically leap into your situation. There are some things that's got you bound, but I dare you to be man or woman enough to minister to that situation. You may have cancer, you may have me in a situation that I don't want to be in, but I prophesy to you that that you've got to die. Yes, lack you may have me bound in chains, but I prophesy to you that this will be my last season, bro. All I've got to do is believe in the power of God. Paul is locked in, in chains, and he's going back and forth, and they lock him in a cell. Uh -huh. Dr. Mercy, it is in this portion, uh, Pastor Andrews, and, and it is in this portion of his of his uh, uh, excursions preaching the gospel that I my respect level for him elevates all the more. Yeah. He elevates all the more because while sitting in a jail cell in Rome, uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, not knowing if he's going to live yes, sir. or die, uh -huh. he has the yes, unmitigated sir. gall to sit down and write a letter of encouragement to the church at Ephesus. Uh, it is mind blowing. Yeah. He's facing uncertain death, and I, I want to park right here because some of you are going through hell, high water. You're going through all kinds of situations, and still God has called you to encourage no some people. No and so it's easy. It is easy, saints of God, to encourage people when everything is going well in your life. Yeah. But can you encourage somebody yeah. when your child is acting? Yeah. Right? Can you encourage encourage somebody when you feel in pain? in your body. Can you encourage somebody when the deal just didn't quite go the yeah. way you were yeah. going? Can you be mad or woman enough or saved enough to encourage somebody? You can cross the aisle and let somebody know, I may not be feeling the best, but God can still use me. I, I may not be feeling the best, but God can still use me. I may be going through right now, but God can still use me. I may have pain in my body, 
but God can still use you. And if you are crazy like I'm crazy, yes, I know you're feeling pain in your body right now. I know you're going through in your finances right now. I know your child is acting up right now. But when you just whip across the aisle at your neighbor and say, I declare healing in your body. I declare healing in your body. I declare breakthrough in your body. I declare financial increase in your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of you are just sitting close enough to somebody who has an apostolic undertone in their voice. As they spoke, you begin to feel something in you. God then wants to use you. Paul is in Ephesus. Ephesus. Uh, he's in, excuse me, Paul is in Rome writing a letter to Ephesus. This letter is so powerful that most theologians today not only just believe that it was addressed to the church at Ephesus, but that it was so powerful that it circulated from Philippi to, uh, to all of the different places throughout Asia Minor that they were all encouraged by one letter. Yes. Uh, could it be that one thing that God has called you to do in this season won't just inspire your local church, but it could possibly inspire a generation of people that are looking for, check this out, an authentic relationship with God. Yes. Uh, they are tired. They are tired of shouting fetched. Uh, they want to feel God in the totality of that relationship. They want to know him to be a healer. They want to know that he can bring them out. You see, they're not like us. They're not just conditioned to come to church and high-five somebody and still have hell on the inside of them. They're a little themselves to find out what is it about this God that can change me because I came from a broken home. I've been abused. I've I dabbled with drugs. I've experienced minute with other religions. I've been to college and, and people have strayed away from the faith. I need to know a real God because i got real situations. Yes, I have time to play church with yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think the season of praying church has exposed just how weak the church is. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I might park here, COVID-19 came into our communities and literally exposed yeah. just how weak some of us are. We tried all of the gimmicks and games. We blew on COVID-19 and it's still here. We danced on COVID-19 and it's still here. We turned around three times and it's still here. It is fools we are. So here it is. There's a society and a world that is waiting on a church that will be everything the text said it could be. Say so, Pastor. This stuff, the weeks is where we find Paul's letter as it reaches the church of Ephesus. We, we find the church of Ephesus uh, uh, being, being endowed with a letter from this man, the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul is writing from this place in Rome, this cold, wet jail cell, but yet still encourages a church that is leagues away from Rome. And if you take Ephesians and you break it down theologically, you would see that it really comes into two parts. Uh, the first part, the first part, chapters one through three, is explaining to the people of God who they are in God. Yeah. Uh, who, who they are in Christ. Yeah. It is explaining to them why. Because Ephesus was a place that was endowed with different doctrines from yes. several different yes. Yes. Suffered philosophical positions that were confusing the minds of the people. And so Paul realized that I gotta spend some time yes. explaining to people who they are in yes. Christ. Yes. Uh, could it be the reason why so many people are confused is because we've been shouting at them and not teaching them who they are. Yes. 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 Well, the problem is we miss who we are. And so we have a society of individuals that are having identity crisis. Yeah. 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 They don't know who they are. They don't know. Because we spent more time making ourselves feel good than we did educating the generation that came out. And so it became more about our traditions and ideologies and philosophical thoughts and denominations than it was about making sure that the next generation understood yes, who they were yes, in sir. Christ. I, I, I'm an old school Baptist with Pentecostal and apostolic undertones, and I must tell you that I get excited when I hear people talk about the blood. Yeah. So it's the blood that reaches. It works. Oh, yeah. See, it's it the works. blood that wipes away all of my sin. And so even in the midst of my identity, I look in the mirror and say, I've been blood, blood, blood. And not only have I been blood, blood, I've been blood washed. I want to talk to 25 of you that are watching me all over the world that feel guilty about what you did yesterday. There is no sin that the blood can wash away. I, I know that the church may make you feel guilty about what you did, but the blood can wash away all. Well, the blood has to come from somewhere. And so he wrote, there is a fountain. 
there's some blood that came from Jesus that if you accept it, he will wipe away all of your mess. Because we, we went to church and left children home. Uh-huh. So true. 
and came Jesus. back to an issue. Jesus. Instead of saying, if you eat my food, you got to go worship my dog. Right. All right. I'm alive. So I'm mad enough to back up everything that I'm saying right now. No, you can't live in the apostle's house and worship something else. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Because I know who I am in Christ. That's it good. is my duty to let you know who you are in yes. Christ. And that's where Paul is. Yes. Paul spends the first three, three chapters of this letter that is turned into a book. Uh -huh. Letting everybody know. Everybody. That accepts them who they are in Christ. You are saved, <laughs> sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. It's been chapters 1 through 3, Pastor Rudy discussing that. But it is chapters 3 through 6 where he takes the time to explain them not just who they are in God, mm -hmm. but what their responsibilities were in God. Uh -huh. yes. You know what is so funny, Elder Mills, is that we have a church that wants power, but they don't perform properly. Okay, let, let me park right here. We want power, but we don't want to perform properly. Yes, the Holy Ghost doesn't just fall on you so you can sing well. No, sir. Am I helping anybody in here today? Yes. The Holy Spirit doesn't just fall on you so you can sing well. The Holy Spirit wants to see you cast out demons. Come on. Yes. That's it. That's it. So I know as a pastor, I very, it seems like I have very lenient philosophies on dealing with people discipline, from a disciplinary standpoint. It's not that. It's that I simply believe that we've got to stop sitting people down for spirits we can't cast out. Uh -huh. So when somebody makes a mistake in your church, the first thing you want to do is expose them, embarrass them, and sit them down. But if they came to you and said, I'm wrestling with this spirit, you can't even do anything with it. Because you want power to dance in the pulpit, but you don't want power to cast Cast out spirits. Could it be, anecdotally, the problem is uh, uh, you're dealing with the same thing. But you learn how to mask it, cover it up, and make it look good. Y'all all right today? Yeah. I got enough friends. I'm not advocating for more. If you decide to be my friend, I would love it. But I must preach the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. These people ain't like, they, they don't need us to run and dance and shout. They need us to cast out spirits. Yes. Yeah. So Paul talks about who we are. So he begins, you know, the last chapter of Ephesians chapter 6, the most efficient, uh, probably the most well-read chapter in the whole book, yeah. the whole missive, the whole uh, epilogue. Uh -huh. So he begins it, and he breaks it down in three different compartments. If you study, he breaks it down in three different compartments. The first com uh, compartment is conduct, how we must carry ourselves in an earthly capacity. Uh -huh. I, I think it's so sad because I've seen people with power that don't have integrity. Mm -hmm. All right. Come on now. Yeah. So you got a word to preach, but you don't live an integral lifestyle outside of the pulpit. My Lord, so my right. life, my walk, should my show who I belong to, yeah, even right. if I'm not that's speaking. It. That's that's right. Right. How I do business on my job, uh, in deals, how I how I conduct myself on my job. Yeah. Some of you, if I went to your job today and say, hi, I'm Apostle so-and-so, and my member goes to, is, is, is employed here, they would look at me and say, she go to church? Right. He goes to church simply because you have church down, but yes. you don't have Christian conduct Come in the right. right. Amen. So he spends the first portion, he spends the first portion of this of this chapter, chapter six, teaching us about Christian conduct. Uh, he spends the second portion of this chapter talking about the battlefield and the enemies in which we fight. And then the third portion is he talks about probably the most famous portion of this portion of the pericope. He, uh, he talks about putting on the whole armor of God. Right. Right. And some of us preach putting on the whole armor of God, skipping the previous portion of the text right. that lets us know why we need to wear armor. Right. 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 Uh, what do you need oil for if you're not willing to be obedient with it? Right. 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 Everybody wants to be viewed as somebody who's anointed, but then want to live the lifestyle of an anointed person. So in other words, you want to be anointed on Sunday. If I go back to the second point of what Paul is writing about in this text, that's what we'll find in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. He said, for, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but 
reason why he's talking about this way because God has a history of being a military commander. Uh, God, God led Joshua through so many military campaigns that his enemies bowed to him. He, he led David through so many military campaigns that, that enemies literally panicked at this young boy. You think about it. David, being not much older than some of the children in this church, walks out on the battlefield and fights the greatest champion known to mankind at that time with a rock and a sling. I got a tape right here and do some exegetical excavation, and here it is. Uh, what is interesting, Pastor Rushing, before he goes out on the battlefield with his sling, uh, uh, King Saul tried to dress it in his armor. And David takes the time to say, nah, uh, this ain't going to work for me. I'm going out on the battlefield with what I'm used to because I feel a bear and a lion with this apparatus and with your armor, uh, I'm not too sure of. And I think what David is saying, if we take our isogenical imagination and deal with the text a little bit deeper, I think David is saying, uh, he's been challenging these folks for nine weeks and, and I just got here and you ain't been out there to fight him yet. So why are you giving me your armor? In other words, what he's saying, if it's not working for you, how is it going to work for me? Why would you give me something that's not working for you? And some of y'all got to be careful who you take advice from in this season. How are you telling me how to be a wife and you don't have 10 husbands? How are you telling me how to manage my finances in your place? Working for yeah. He has to tell them, meaning the apostles. Yes. Yes. He, he has to tell them, he has to tell them that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah. This is not a military campaign in the flesh. This is not about swords, bows, arrows, and chariots. And some of you are trying to fight the enemy like the enemy. Uh, my father, the late Reverend Monroe Weeks, used to say, you can't raise hell with the devil. <laughs> and some of you are trying to raise hell with the devil. Let me tell you why that does not work. Yeah. She, she get me wrong on my job, I'm going to let her know who I am. Let me tell you why that doesn't Spirit. work. It, for one, when the two of you engage in verbal combat, if God dispatches an angel, uh, uh, into the situation, the angel can't recognize who to fight for because both of y'all look like the enemy. So in other words, when I carry myself like a godly person, all of the supernatural things that I'm entitled to are released into my situation. So this is not a military campaign in the flesh. This is a supernatural engagement for the property that belongs to the kingdom. Supernatural engagement for the property of the kingdom. I want to speak to 25 pastors that may be online right now, may watch this later on. That's why you're catching so much hell in your church. I'm telling you, don't quit simply because God has made your church the citadel of its region. Right. And there are people in your church that the devil is using right. to try to stress you yeah. out yeah. and make you yeah. quit. Yeah. And no, it's not perfect, but it is a fight. All right. yes. So you have an apostolic response. They try to make me quit. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You have an apostolic response. We wrestle not against the flesh and blood. Right. But let me tell you what he takes the time to do. Uh -huh. He takes time to explain to them who their enemies are. Uh -huh. He said, but against principalities, yes. against powers, yes. and against the rulers of darkness of this world, yes. spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Paul takes the time to do something from a jail cell in Rome that we have yet to do today. He unpacks the fact that demonic forces are organized. Yes, they are. Yes. And not only are they organized, they operate in a hierarchy. Yes. And so, I hate to say this, yes, but sir. the enemy is more organized than the church is. Yes. Yes. You know, the church 
Not much I keep calling you because me you laugh about this, but the church is the only army in which a private can dress like a general and not be criticized for it. In the United States military, my brother is a veteran of the United States military. He's in the Marine Corps. He was a lance corporal at the time in which he came out. If he put on the uniform of a general, he would be court-martialed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But in the body of Christ, we've got ushers dressing like bishops. In the body of Christ, we've got deacons dressing like apostles. Uh -huh. Yes, God called you, but he didn't call you to that. In the body of Christ, we've got people who should be serving in the culinary department that are now doing all kinds of things, laying hands on people and prophesying. And so what happens is, you have to understand, because demonic forces are so organized, they attack, they release certain demonic forces to certain titles. I want to I let you breathe a breath of fresh air. There are certain demons that I face as an apostle, you ain't going to never have to worry about. But the moment you stand up and say you're something that you're not, that you have not been equipped to deal with that level of warfare, now the enemy attacks you on a level and you're trying to realize why you lost your mind. You know you remember when they tried to cast out a demon and the demon ran everybody out of the house on a little mood and they, the demon said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? trying to operate on a level that God has not called you to. Right. In fact, he called you to support other levels, but yes. because uh, you were never really successful in your own secular life, you come to church and try to be something you were never been, and it's a psychological disorder that you have when trying to be something that God did not call you to be because ultimately you don't feel good. Uh -huh. right. Right. They didn't pay attention to you. You weren't a jock in high school. You were not the prom queen. You weren't prom, you weren't popular in college. And instead of going and being successful in other areas of business, you come to church and throw your weight around and demand a title. And some weak leader gives you a title, and they're not really they're not really putting a title on your anointing. They're putting a title on your insecurity. So now, in all actuality, we have a bunch of uninsecure leaders. Why is this so important? Dr. We said this in our opening, and this has nothing to do with my text. I'm just flowing in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Uh, 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 awesome. That we're losing generals in this season. Yeah, that's right. In our local area, we lost Superintendent Heflin. We lost Dr. Fred Mayweather. We lost on a national, international scale, Dr. Iola Locke, uh, Bishop Iola. We lost all of these different people, yes. and we're replacing these giants with titles who have emotional issues. Yeah. Yeah. Because you didn't put a title on my anointing. You put a title on my psychological state. Because I never got anything fixed. I've got a collar, but I don't have any power. So when I lay hands on somebody who has the same issues that I'm hiding, I now strengthen the demon that's holding them down. I don't cast them out. The old people used to say, be careful what dog you feed, because sometimes all we need is strength to fight you. Some of y'all have been feeding the wrong dogs. So because you've got emotional issues that you're too prideful to sit down and say, yeah, the divorce broke me. That's right. But you're prideful to say, yes, my children not being with me broke me. You're too prideful to say, you know what, I've been dealing with this since I was a child, and all I've learned how to do in church is to mask it and not be delivered from it. Yeah. Now you grow up and you go to seminary, and you get an MDiv or a D-man, and you learn how to squall and hoop, but in all actuality, you have no power because you haven't been delivered from your own in insecurity. And so we bring you into church and we put you up before the people of God. We start to call up on you and now you can preach the word, but you cannot manifest the word. You can talk about people being healed, delivered, and set free. But you're too afraid to do altar calls. And if I may take a minute and deal with this even deeper, you may not even want to do altar calls because you're not even concerned with them getting a breakthrough. You 
concerned with the crowd feeding your ego. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So as long as they're clapping, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I got up here somebody who was happy. Got up here somebody that's broken. So I get up here every Sunday to make you, make me feel better. So my church leaves, my church leaves with an exegetical and hermeneutical conveyance of my issues. Mm -hmm. They leave here with the same demons in their spirit. Mm -hmm. But I never get delivered. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to find a spiritual battle. And I haven't gotten delivered myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want armor. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand the battle. Yeah. All right. yeah. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah. Wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Look at somebody and say, this is not a flesh fight. This is not a flesh fight. It's not a flesh fight. This is not a flesh fight. This is not a flesh fight. For we wrestle not. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now, you have to understand that principalities, uh, Paul does not do this in reverse chronological order. He does this from greatest to least. He does this, as you study the text carefully, he does this in understanding the hierarchy of demonic positions and presence. He starts with principalities. He said, literally, there is something afloat that causes and claims the geographical region of a place. A principality is a demonic presence that claims a geographical region for themselves. Yes. Uh, Daniel dealt with this as he was fasting for 21 days as he waited on a breakthrough from an answer from God. He had gotten a revelation from God, but he did not understand it. So he fasted and prayed for 21 days. At the end of the 21 days, a an, an angel shows up and says to him, I have the answer to your prayer. I'm, I'm, I'm moving off quickly. He says, I have the answer to your prayer, but the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, buffeted me and held me up, meaning that there was an angel that was released with his answer, but the principality that oversaw him held up the blessing from the angel. Now, he says, but a greater angel, a warring angel, is dispersed, wrestled with the principality that your breakthrough would come. Y'all yeah. caught this? Yeah. So a principality is a demonic force that, over claim, that claims a region that literally stops certain blessings from coming, certain answers from coming, from having certain angels that cannot deal with that principality until a warring angel deals with that principality. Now you ask, what dispatched the first angel? My prayer dispatched the first angel. Okay? What dispatched my warring angel? My praise dispatched my warring angel. Some blessings that you prayed about, and the blessings are hovering over you. But until you open up your mouth, there's not going to be something that deals with the principality that's holding you back. See, this is why you can't trust a preacher that don't have a praise. Show me a preacher that doesn't have a praise, and I'll show you a preacher that doesn't have any money. Show me a saint that doesn't have a praise, and I will show you a saint that doesn't have any money. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at them, there is a principality over that region of stopping their prayers from coming through. Mm -hmm. So you wonder why there's a methodology in my life where I cause the people of God to praise from time to time. Because you spent all of this time praying about it as if God can't hear. He heard you the first time. But God is a God of orders, rules, and things of that nature. Um, nature. So if you are praying from a place that has not been alleviated of its principality, your praise has to be so powerful that a warring angel hears you and gets down into the situation of this Yes, yes, yes. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. Yeah. So in all actuality, it's time for you to shout. Yeah. Hallelujah. What do you mean by that? I've been asking God to make me rich, but there's something hovering over me. And it seems like my prayer just can't get through. No, baby, what it is is your blessing can't find you because the enemy has claimed that territory. Hallelujah. Yes. The enemy has 
claim that territory. So when you sit there with your mouth closed, when it's been designed to assist you, they find you. Watch denominations keep their mouth closed for 30 years and the enemy enjoys it. Yes. He enjoys us going through things like business as usual. Because nothing satisfies the enemy more than saints who cannot be a living testament of the word of God. And listen, I need you to look across the aisle before I continue going. I need you to look across the aisles and tell somebody I'm about to release a warring angel. I'm praying about it. Now I'm about to release a warring angel. Now get ready. I'm about to release something that's going to break through and free up the angel that's coming right It needs to hear my praise. It heard my prayer. Now it needs to hear my prayer. Now I'm going to hear my prayer. Oh, 
There it is. There it is, right there. See? Oh, he said, wow, son of a bitch. Sermon 
Praise it's because I woke up Tuesday morning and the Holy Spirit said, invade high places. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I opened my eyes. I saw the two words, high places. Yeah. Now, some of you may not understand what I'm talking about because you don't have that level of spiritual connection with God. Mm -hmm. I've literally communed with God before. Yeah. I want to tell you something that you may think I'm crazy. When I was sick in my body, as Don oh. Weeks would tell you, I was fasting and praying, and the Lord commanded me to take communion. I took communion. Uh, uh, every Tuesday and Thursday sitting in my home. Well, one day I'm taking communion and I get down on my face in prayer. And Sister Kim, I was in such a place in prayer that I literally felt and saw the feet of Jesus. As I'm laying down, I see the feet of Jesus and he begins to speak to me in such a capacity. Uh, well, two weeks later, uh, there was an invasion in my body. I was laying uh, in, the, in, the, in the bed and I felt the enemy begin to attack my body. Yeah. I thought I was not going I'm making, and I literally felt the hand of God go into my chest, grab my heart muscle, and begin to massage my heart again. There has to be a connection with God in some respect. The God we preach about becomes real in our life. Yes, sir. So he spoke to me. He said, I Places. High places. Yes. Problem with our society today is that we have an apostolic assignment to invade high places. But we don't have anointings that empower those people. The apostle of God, my, my assignment today is to release an anointing in this place. That will invade where the enemy has set up shop and yep, in our society. Yeah. The Holy Spirit began to show me that the enemy has set up shop in three places in our society. Mm -hmm. Three high places in our society. Yeah. The places of education, yes. place of education, health care, yes. the places of business. Yes. Some of y'all are so worried about government. That God is withdrawing himself from that because he doesn't want it to get the credit. That's it. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. That's it. Come on. We've got conservatives that are giving presidents credit. We've got liberals that are giving their presidents credit. And God is saying, wait a minute. I breathe life into all of them. Yeah. So we got churches that are becoming more political than we are scriptural. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about who you vote for, not about who you worship. So God says, what I'm going to do in this season is going to be through my people and not through politics that the world may know. I want you to understand that there are people taking the vaccine. I'm not telling you not to take it or take it. I'm telling you that there are people that are having allergic reactions. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something real quickly. Yes. That those of you that are putting your trust in a vaccine have your trust in the wrong place. Amen. Yes. We've got to put our trust back into God. Yes. That God may see and breathe on the vaccinations. Yes. That even if the vaccines work, we say it's not because Pfizer has the best scientists. Yes. Because there's a God that sits on the throne. Yes. I need you to turn off CBC, uh, CNN for, for, for about three days. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go into your closet and get into your word. Yeah. And believe God in this season. Yeah. Because I want to tell you before I move forward, if, if the devil could have killed you, yeah. you would already. Yeah. Three places, three high places that God began to speak to me about. He said education, business, education, business, and health care. In the educational system in the United States, there are over 50 million children that are in the education system. Over 2 million children that are in the education system in, these, in the state of Florida. In the state of Florida, we now have all kinds of things going on that we've never had going on before. We knew that this was eventually going to be an issue back in the 80s when we allowed somebody to take prayer out of school. Yeah, that's right. right. So what God is wanting us to do is understand and recognize these battlefields. 
put on your whole armor and God wants to strategically place some people within the education system to influence it in a capacity that takes the enemy's grip off of it. So this is the part you may not shout about, but I don't want you to shout, I want you to think. God wants somebody who he releases an anointing on you so boldly that because you're on the school campus, there will not be any school shooting. God wants somebody so powerful on the grounds of a school campus. And it doesn't matter if you're the principal or the janitor. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. God wants somebody there that releases such an anointing that no child goes home. Amen. 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 Children are literally walking in places and feel the presence and power of God yes. in these places. Not just, not just primary or elementary or middle school or high school. Uh, places, but God wants somebody to infiltrate college campuses. Yes. We're yes. finding that the majority of children that stray away from the faith do so in the first year mm -hmm. in college. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I wish be true myself. Amen. I find it quite interesting that we go to college and we study everything from the, the Empress Meditations by Marcus Aurelius to the writings of, of Frederick Nietzsche. Some of us go and read Hitler's book, Mein Kopf, and all of these different things, and we're taught that the Bible is philosophical and, and mythological. Yeah. We're beginning to study the Bible like Greek mythology. Yeah. 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 And God is looking for somebody in these education systems to say, yes, not only is it poetry, not only is it sagas, not only is it epics, but it's something that will save your soul. And yes, brother professor, I know you have a PhD, but do you know Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Healthcare system is one that we need people to infiltrate, not about insurance or no insurance. We need nurses that will walk down the hall and have such an anointing on them that people sit up in their beds who've been dead women for weeks. This is what must be released. You cannot just come to church shouting dead. You gotta come to church and ask God for an anointing. Yeah. When I walk past you, tumors melt. When I walk past you, high blood pressure begins to regulate itself. Coronary artery disease, artery, artery and blood vessels begin to open. Kidney diseases die because of what's on me and it's in this place. And no, I'm not walking around so everybody can get credit. Give me credit for it. I'm just simply walking through the halls thanking God for it. Yeah. Yeah. We are evicting principalities from this region. Yes. 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 Then in the areas of business. I don't want to offend anybody in this room, but there's a time coming in this country where the economy is not going to be able to support everybody. Mm -hmm. I see it in ways you can't even imagine, but God showed it to me years ago. And the economies of the world are about to become global. Yeah. And this is not a conspiracy theory. This is not the, the credits to a movie. But the church has got to put itself in a financial situation to employ the people in our communities and stop expecting people to love us more than we love ourselves. Yeah. There's going to be a time coming where in order, in order to do certain things, you're going to have to compromise your faith. Some of you are doing it already. You're afraid to tell your boss, I don't work on Sundays. Mm -hmm. That's a religious day for me. I'm not doing it. Amen. Amen. So we've got to infiltrate the areas of business. Check this out. So the saints can start these things and economically support the things of God. Yeah. Yeah. Help us go. It's time for the church to become a theocracy again. Yes. So God wants an anointing released in this place. Amen. All over social media, all over this room. Mm. Some of you may say, but you didn't call out my careers. But those three careers are what all of these sub-careers begin to stem off of. Yes. Subsidiaries yes. begin to stem off of that. So we're going to release an anointing into those three places. Starting on January 1st, we're going to go on a 21-day fast, reading, fasting, praying every day. Yes. 
and releasing anointing that will evict principalities from our regions. Yeah. But will also empower us to reclaim these three places yeah. for the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. Watch the breakthroughs that are occurring. We're getting ready to embark on some dangerous times. Yes, if you stay on the ship, Amen. If you stay connected to the word and the will of God, yes. not only will you make it out, you will thrive in the process. Yes. Yes. yes, sir. So I want to speak to you prophetically, all of you that are in here and those of you that are watching. We are about to experience a supernatural transfer mm -hmm. of wealth. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want you to hear this. The economy is going to dip before it, this, this happens. Yeah. The economy is going to suffer before this happens. And I'm going to still stand here and preach this message. Why? Because it's easy to preach prosperity when the economy is doing good. God calls us to speak the dry bones and command yeah. the yeah. And if you position yourself through prayer and the strategies that are released by God, this will hit you and change the whole trajectory of your lineage. Mm -hmm. Your children and grandchildren will not experience what you've experienced financially yeah. if you miss it. We have an apostolic assignment in this season mm -hmm. to infiltrate these three places. Yes. Pull down the strongholds of the enemy mm -hmm. that the people of God may experience God good, God's goodness. Yeah. Let me say this as I get ready to close. To you doomsday prophets, mm -hmm. the world has been in worse shape than this before. Yes, yes. Stop looking at the news and saying what you see to seem right. Mm -hmm. Get on your face before God. Let him speak to you. Because any prophet that releases doomsday, study the text, that releases judgment also releases an antidote to that situation. That's right. Amen. So you, you're just telling me the problem. We need people to tell us the solution. Yes. Yes. We're standing all over the house. 